Good afternoon, everybody. Hearing myself in stereo is very off-putting. Um, I'm going to kick on now. Uh, hello, I am Chris Chandler. I am the Microsoft Alliance Manager working for Grey Matter. Um, I don't work for Microsoft, so I work for, for Grey Matter, just, uh, just adding that. Uh, before we before we start, but today I have the pleasure of talking you through um, Microsoft Partner Network changes and how that is going to impact ISV. So certainly around around considerations in line with these changes, but also what I'm going to do is build on um, some of uh, what Steve covered this morning in the keynote, just getting a, a little bit deeper um, into into some of that content. So for those that uh, haven't uh, haven't met me before. As I say, Microsoft Alliance Manager for, for, for Grey Matter. I've been uh, working in the partner channel for, for 20 years this October, um, and I did have to check that. And yes, I started as a junior, uh, junior technician building white box uh, PCs and servers. And when that was still a thing, I moved through to doing pre-sales um, and then uh, Alliance's, Alliance's roles. Uh, I am responsible for the Microsoft team within Grey Matter. I'll introduce you to that team on, on the next slide, you'll see some other faces from, from when Matt was speaking this morning. But ultimately, my role is to take Microsoft and translate it into normal people language and help you understand that. Because I'm very aware, from at least from an acronym's perspective, uh, some of the Microsoft language can be a little bit, uh, a little bit confusing. Um, I am Microsoft certified, so certainly in terms of what I talk about from a Microsoft perspective as well, I back that up with certifications, as, as, do, as do my teams, as you can see a number of them on the screen there. So my team, so Gina is here today. Gina is uh, our Microsoft Azure BDM, so very much focused around supporting our partners around, around Microsoft Azure in advance of our engagements, bringing in the cloud know-how technical specialists. I've additionally got James Bayliss and Chris Robinson who support me around Microsoft partnerships. So having these Microsoft partner conversations with you, delivering workshops, understanding where you are and where you'd like to get to around Microsoft partners, partnership and aligning the programs um, to that. And then lastly, uh, again, you may have seen her running around, Alana Beswick is our Microsoft marketing manager as well. So she's done a fantastic job arranging, arranging today as well as many other the Microsoft campaigns that you will see. Um, from us in the coming coming months. So, um, just a couple of questions using a show of hands. How many of you are already Microsoft partners? Awesome. And of those that are Microsoft partners, how many of you have a competency? Okay, fantastic. And then again, next question is how many of you are ISVs? I know that feels like a stupid question for ISV partner day. Um, how many of you being ISVs are SaaS based of a SaaS based solution versus, okay, great, versus deployment into customer owned subscriptions? Okay, fantastic. And last question are there any MSPs, SIs, or resellers in the audience? Awesome. Okay, so um, agenda. I've kind of split this session into two. Two parts. First is going to focus on uh, the partner program evolution um, in terms of those changes, uh, transition from the competency model to solution partner designations, um, talk through the requirements around that, but then drill into specifically from an ISV perspective what the considerations are, because um, I'm going to preempt a lot of your uh, a lot of your questions, a lot of your thoughts. Are solution partners appropriate for ISVs? Um, I'm sure some of you will be thinking that. Um, and then we'll move into more around the Microsoft ISV partnership and programs. So uh, around Microsoft actually wanting to learn from ISVs, around building partnerships specifically for that. The ISV program, as ISV success program that Steve talked about this morning. I'm gonna drill into that in terms of the benefits of that. And then lastly, touch on uh, Microsoft commercial marketplace and, and benefits aligned to that. So, quick bit of uh, Pictionary on the screen. Um, people, feel free to shout out first. Uh, first image. What is that? Bear. Bear. Okay. Uh, probably the second one's a bit more, a bit more difficult. What's that? Chris. Me. Me. Okay. Uh, third box. No. Shoe. Shoe. Last one. Right, okay, so please bear with me whilst I shoehorn ISVs into Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft Solution Partner Designation uh, 
uh, model going going forward. Um, so yeah, the evolution where we talk about uh, solution partner designation that is part of the Microsoft Cloud Partner Program and uh, and changes uh, changes within that. So those of you that are uh, are or may not be familiar, Microsoft previously had 19 competencies in which you could attain in, in specialist areas. Um, typically what we'd find from an ISV perspective is they'd attain the app dev, app integration uh, competencies. Some of you may remember far back where they actually had an ISV specific competency that was, that was removed. Um, more recently we're finding ISVs attaining the Azure competency or the uh, smaller mid market solutions competency focused around M365 where we're creating uh, add-ons for, for M365. What Microsoft have done in the, tr in the evolution or transition to uh, the Cloud Partner Program and these uh, solution partner designations has gone from 19 to uh, what is uh, six there on the screen. It, although it's, there's six on the screen, there are actually nine in total, or I think there is the, due to be nine, right? There's, uh, so uh, where we look at the modern work one, that's split into two in terms of SMB and enterprise. Um, Mark was uh, Mark from Microsoft sat in the front row. Uh, it, uh, advised that from a biz apps perspective as well, there's going to be SMB and enterprise tracks for that one as well. Um, but lastly, there's there's an additional badge. It's kind of collect the whole set, and you'll get uh, another another badge um, as 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 well. So. As I say, Microsoft are condensing the number of, uh, of, of competencies into solution part designations for, for ease um, and simplicity reasons is typically the, the two, that, two, that we, two that we get. Um, then what we're, we're suggesting is in, in line with the attainment of those, as we talk about the requirements for attainment as I, as I run through, is actually not thinking about we've attained this, we've done our job as a partner, is thinking about actually how you can take that one step further. So, uh, so as as opposed to just as you would have previously done, you've attained a competency, you've unlocked some some benefits. Um, I just need a silver or gold level. Actually, Microsoft is now saying that you attain a solution partner designation, and then think about actually how you take that one step further from an investment and in growth within your business to attain uh, specialisations. Again, they will align to the specific solution partner designations, but just to talk about one in particular, if you were to, for example, attain a solution partner designation for infrastructure, which is very much focused around Azure, if you were then to take that uh, a step further and attain an advanced specialization in, for example, Windows and SQL Server migration, although I appreciate that's not necessarily always applicable to ISVs, you unlock additional programs and funding possibilities from Microsoft, such as the Azure Modern Migration, modernization and migration program or AMP, or uh, which essentially Microsoft will provide you with funding to migrate your customers to the cloud. Actually in advance of that, you unlock the ability to deliver solution assessments, which enables you to assess customer environments in advance of migration. Uh, again, paid for by Microsoft, but they additionally um, have the opportunity to give you access to the tools that they use, so such as Block 64 and, and Cloud Cloud Pilot. Now, I appreciate that talking about that isn't appropriate for 90% of the audience because you're not moving workloads from on-premise to cloud for your customers, you're selling your own IP, but making you aware. So as I said, there are um, some lovely badges that you get in attainment of, of uh, of the solution partner designations. Uh, in doing that and attainment of that, you do uh, do unlock certain certain benefits. So kind of going uh, left to right. Um, what I've done from a product benefits perspective is just called out some of the Azure specific. So across um, the solution partner designations. So if you were to attain one of them, they would offer you six k. Azure bulk credit for, for test dev purposes internally. If you were to attain a, uh, the infrastructure one, so the Azure focus one, you get an additional 6K, um, as well as the, uh, some of the data ones as well. Basically, they'll stack that 6K. So if you attain infrastructure, then, then data, you get 6K for each, and if you would keep going. Um, from a Dynamics 365 perspective, you've got the ability to access sandboxes, uh, Visual Studio subscriptions, M365 subscriptions, um, and, um, and those from cloud ones, they've not forgotten about on-premise. There's ability to get uh, on-premise 
licenses as as well. From a marketing perspective, and, and certainly not something that I saw many customers taking advantage of from a uh, when when utilising competency, is go to market uh, engagement and asset from Microsoft. So. Um, my, uh, co op funding. So, it, as you accrue incentives for your Microsoft uh, revenues, you can actually attain co op funds and use those co op funds to pay for marketing activity. As well as marketing activity, it covers things such as um, internal specialists as well. So, 50% of an internal specialist salary that focuses on Microsoft. Um, you could even use it for device acquisition as well for uh, test, and, uh, test and demo purposes. Even things such as HoloLens um, were, were included as part of that. But additionally, um, say consultation in terms of your, your go-to-market activity. Um, but the last one that I'll call out in this section is the digital marketing content on demand tool, which is a tool from, from Microsoft, which essentially is, gives you curated campaigns that you would just put, put your data in, put your social media handles, put your contact information in, and over a period of six to 12 weeks, they'd send out, send out uh, that campaign. Um, and lastly, uh, another benefit that I, I didn't really see too many people taking advantage of was the technical advisory support that you also get from Microsoft, more specifically the technical advisory hours. So if you needed guidance from a, a deployment perspective or, or a pre-sales perspective, you could engage with Microsoft and they could provide you with, with that support around that. Um, links on the bottom. These will all be shared in, in, in follow-up. But what I will say, and I'll just pause here before I go on to the next section that talks about the benefit, uh, sorry, the, the requirements around solution partner designations, those of you with competencies um, can renew your competency to continue accessing the benefits so you don't have to just jump to uh, the uh, solution partner designations as is required from, from the uh, 3rd of October in terms of the new program coming into place, sorry. Um, you can continue to retain, uh, sorry, continue to renew your competencies, access the benefits, so internal use rights benefits, go-to-market benefits, um, and, uh, and incentive benefits, at least once more um, from that October deadline. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm awesome. So, the, the, the fun part. Uh, what Microsoft have done is um, simplified by uh, saying there's three kind of core uh, criteria that you need to be considerate of when uh, in attainment of a solution partner designation. The first is around performance, and that is net seat customer ads. Uh, the second is skilling, which varies depending on obviously the solution partner designation topic that you, uh, you are, are focusing, focusing on, but it is split into two sections, which is um, immediate and advanced certification and different paths um, aligned to that. And lastly is, is around success, is the last, last pillar, and that's growth and in, ter in terms of um, uh, customer deployments, but also kind of your growth uh, over the last 12, 12 months. So um, <laughs> in, in, measuring, in measuring that, they've got this uh, partner capability score as I say, we've got the, uh, the performance skilling and customer success metrics, as you can see on the screen there. And um, what I've done is I've just taken uh, some, of, some of the core, core uh, solution partner designations and built into this table. But as you can see, you kind of said, taking it one step further, and it's not just a case of um, X customer ads, it's actually X customer ad equates to points, and you need X amount of points. Uh, so you need a point in each, each of the sections, um, and to attain a solution partner designation, you need a minimum of 70 points out of a possible 100 that you could accrue. So if we talk through the uh, solution partner for modern work and the solution partner for Azure, I'll kind of dig into this a little bit further. The, the modern work one, we'll talk about the SMB track more specifically. But first up is the, the Solution partner for infrastructure. So this is the Azure focused um, track. So within the performance section, um, NetSea adds the total amount of points you can achieve is 30. Um, so NetSea adds maximum amount of points is 30 points. It's you get 10 points per customer ad. So basically in the trailing 12 months, if you add three Azure, net new Azure customers, you get the maximum amount of 30 points. But as it says there, a customer is only eligible 
when they're consuming over $1,000 of Azure per month. What I will say is that from an ISV perspective, where you're not reselling Microsoft, you can additionally be recognized using the partner admin link. So it's a link to a customer where influencing usage on their Azure subscription. So for those of you that are deploying your, your IP, your solution to your customer owned subscription, is make sure that you go back in and request that partner admin link association so Microsoft recognize you as the ones that are influencing the revenues within, within that subscription. From a skilling perspective, um, it, gets, uh, it gets quite fun on the uh, solution partner infrastructure track. Um, the intermediate, uh, intermediate certs uh, require you, and you get a maximum amount of 20 points, to have at least two people with the AZ-104, uh, so Azure Admin certification, before you can begin accruing points, and you accrue points, four, po four points per person, doing the Azure, either the Azure Networking Engineer Azure Stack Operator or Windows Server and Hybrid Administrator Cert. Um, Azure Networking is one exam. Azure, you can say that Azure Stack Hub is, is one exam. The uh, Server and Hybrid Administrator is two exams. Obviously, if you're interested in going down this path, um, you just need to be mindful of probably ones in which the exams are going to be quicker to, to attain is probably what I'll say. And then from an advanced search perspective, very similar. In terms of there is a requirement for Azure Solution Architect Expert Certification, so it's the AZ-104 plus the AZ-305, before you can begin attaining points and four points per individual, um, attaining the, either the Azure Virtual Desktop Specialty or the Azure for SAP Workload, workload Specialty. Now, <clears throat> when I've talked to ISVs, my question would be, how many of you are actually interested from a skilling perspective in having people learn about Windows Virtual Desktop or SAP on Azure, it's probably not appropriate for a good 90% of you, unless, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, from a usage growth perspective, 20 points, 10 points per 10% aggregated ACR growth over the 12 month period. Again, that's over that 1,000, uh, over a $1,000 um, per, per, per month perspective. Um, and then lastly, from a deployment perspective, again, 10 points maximum is two points per qualifying net new service deployed into a customer uh, in the uh, last 12 months. And that's all Azure services apart from Azure Virtual Machines. Um, hands up if you think that that is massively simplified program from Microsoft. Awesome, exactly, exactly, what, uh, exactly what I thought. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Um, and then comparatively looking at it from a M365 perspective as well, I'm just going to rattle through this. Uh, similar, two points per, per net seat customer ad. Um, customer eligible when between 10 and 100 seats. Um, eligible workloads are the ones that are listed on the screen. From a certs perspective, actually it's a bit more simplified because you can take the Azure Fundamental certification, which I would suggest is more of an entry level, entry level certification. Um, for to, to accrue points, so you need two people to do that uh, to do that exam, and then from an advanced search perspective, you would need uh, somebody to attain uh, the M365 Certified Enterprise Administrator Expert, which is consists of three um, exams, and then usage growth, 30 points from uh, 500 uh, monthly active usage growth. Um, based on claiming partner of record. So one thing I'm remiss in saying is similar to the Azure one, where you can be recognized by Microsoft for partner admin link association. With M365, there is an equivalent, uh, equivalent uh, association method. It's called claiming partner of record. So where you're influencing M365 usage within a customer, you can go back, and not transact the description, you can go back and, and request, um, request that association. Awesome, and then yeah, lastly from a deployment perspective, similar metrics, five points per new um, associated customer uh, where we're doing CPOR association or 2.5 points where a new CSP. So those that are also selling Microsoft in conjunction with their IP um, from an ISV perspective, um, uh, that, that CSP model. Um, if you want to track how you are doing against uh, against that, there is a solution partner dashboard within within Partner Center. You can you can take a look at as well. There's a link, here, a long link, uh, there, but it gives you a consolidated view in terms of where you are in terms of points. But also you can break down uh, the requirements individually, so you can see the exams, you can see how you're tracking 
against a performance metrics perspective in each of the uh, each of the sections. So I suppose I've gone through that. How I see it from an ISV considerations perspective is um, this is kind of a number of questions that I typically will ask ISVs as as we're talking through these changes from the competency model to the solution partner designation model, and whether they've appetite to work towards the the criteria. Um, is that first one is does your application add value uh, to or require deployment to the customer's Azure subscription? If yes, then you could get the partner admin link association as, as I talked through. Um, comparatively, uh, does your application add value to or require Microsoft 365 or Dynamics? If so, claiming partner of record association. Um, the other piece is if you're not currently transacting Microsoft subscriptions, do you have appetite to do that? So selling your IP as well as subscriptions to your customers. It's a zero cost of entry to begin doing so. So ultimately what you have to do is uh, sign up to be an indirect a reseller if you're already a uh, Microsoft partner. Um, Gray Matter ourselves can support you in and around that and provide things such as white label marketplace, our licensing knowledge, our professional services capability and assessment tools uh, and, and beyond. And lastly, and I think this is kind of the biggest one as I've kind of already alluded to, is do you have the resources and time and ultimately appetite to make the skilling investments required to attain those uh, Microsoft certifications, especially when you look at, as I said, the Azure one, the infrastructure one, where um, you're having to take a, a Windows Virtual Desktop or a SAP on Azure certification, I would suggest, as I say, I would suggest 90% of, of, of you, maybe, maybe not so much. So I'm not necessarily convinced that solution partner designations are appropriate for ISVs. Uh, we've we've provided that feedback to Microsoft as 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 Grey Matter as somebody who uh, works with uh, works with ISVs. They have received this feedback themselves, which is why they are actually asking for feedback from ISVs in terms of how they um, best build out a partnership program in line with working with ISVs. The initial suggestion, as uh, as Steve kind of alluded to this morning, was based on industry. So ISV for certain industry, you receive a solution partner designation aligned to that industry and the benefits included uh, with, within that. What I'll do is share a link to a form in which you can, um, you can engage with Microsoft in and uh, around, around that to provide your, your, your feedback. But they are listening um, and I kind of take comfort in that. So, uh, <clears throat> as I say, now we've got that out of the way, what I want to do is just focus on uh, actually some of the programs that are specific uh, for, for ISVs that Microsoft have curated um, and invested in more so this, uh, this financial year. All right, I'm just going to continue talking through. So the first, first, uh, first one Steve mentioned this morning is the Microsoft ISV Success Program. So uh, that program is, has ultimately been designed to ensure that um, it helps ISVs, it helps software providers uh, build on the Microsoft Cloud, but additionally then take what you've built on the Microsoft Cloud to market uh, via the Azure, Azure Marketplace. Um, as part of the ISV Success Program, there's a number of, of, of gives and gets from from both Microsoft and the partnership side. So uh, Microsoft uh, gives benefits in terms of uh, helping, uh, helping provide support to, uh, to build on, on their cloud. Uh, they give you curated content specific to ISVs being part of the programs. So that includes things such as webcasts and, and hackathons. Um, there, there's both support from a build perspective, but also uh, a marketplace perspective. So they're not just, there we go, look at that. Um, but from a partner, partner gives perspective, um, these, these benefits are available to you uh, over a nine month period. Actually, the subscriptions that you get as part of the program, which I'll talk through, are available for, for 12 months. Um, you publish that finished application to, to, to Marketplace and you're actually engaging with Microsoft during the course of the program to engage in, as it says there, surveys, focus group, as well as one-to-one -one feedback as you uh, engage with your engagement manager. Uh, you get 5K of, of Azure um, for internal use. Um, 
what I would suggest is that off the back of this program, so once you've spent that 5K dollars of Azure, you do transition into essentially a Paygo, uh, Paygo subscription with Microsoft. So what I have said to, uh, to a number of ISVs who have applied and I've suggested attend this program is that think about using that 5K for test and dev purposes purely because if you were to move in production on those Paygo subscriptions, you'll be paying more than you would when via working with a CSP. CSP partner, so just just be just be mindful of that. You get access to an Azure support plan. Um, you get uh, Dynamics 365 uh, subscriptions to use within your within your business within the sandbox. So 25 of those. Um, you get uh, 25 seats of M365 E3 developer subscriptions, but you also get 25 seats of GitHub Enterprise and 25 seats of Visual Studio Enterprise subscriptions as well. And that's from a product perspective. From an enablement and skilling perspective, you do get access to, to Microsoft Learn. That's a thing that already exists. Um, but they've also said that they'll be providing um, exam vouchers to people as well that are part of the program. Um, but from a more engaged perspective, uh, they provide uh, our, our app architecture reviews as well as one hour uh, design sessions with, with Microsoft Architects as well. I would argue what you could tangibly get done within an hour is quite limited. So if you need to better understand your what architecture looks like from an Azure perspective, do come and talk to us because we do have Azure design services that will support that architecture definition. And then lastly on this, they have um, they provide mark, uh, Microsoft Marketplace consultancy as, as well. So it's not just a case of build it, um, and uh, just go ahead and deploy it on Marketplace, they will actually provide an element of guidance in line with that as to how to deploy or create offers within Marketplace respective to how you are delivering your application to customers. So whether that's SaaS based or whether it's into that customer's own Azure subscription. Um, from a qualification uh, criteria perspective, um, you need to be headquartered in the UK or, or Western Europe. Um, as I feel like the bulk of people are within this room. Um, you need to be uh, developing or have an application on Azure, which is B2B focus, so business to business focus. Um, you need intent to publish to Microsoft Marketplace. I'm not sure how they're quite measuring intent. I think it's just a suggestion that you will be uh, doing that. Um, and then lastly, it's just you are a, a member of the Microsoft uh, Partner Network. So you are signed up as a Microsoft Partner, which is free to do and a relatively straightforward process. So I'm uh, just taking it back a step because I'm conscious that you didn't actually see the slides. When I talked about Microsoft uh, Partner Engagement, uh, there is a, a link down the bottom to provide that feedback. So say they are taking initially taking an approach to being uh, vertically aligned. But as I say, this is where they're engaging with ISVs, with device partners, with professional services partners who aren't providing um, uh, subscriptions uh, to gather feedback in terms of how they can shape partner programs to, to, meet, to meet those kind of partners. So um, I've kind of ran through this quickly. The ISV success program, as I say, is designed to support those of you that are building on Azure from build through to deployment and uh, uh, and also listing on Microsoft Marketplace. So benefits to say I've already I've already run through, but ultimately uh, you get engaged with Microsoft um, through your engagement manager. You have access to monthly monthly webcasts uh, uh, and uh, hackathons, but also um, as I talked through on the next slide, internal use rights subscriptions and guidance in terms of deployment, but also building offers on Marketplace. From a partner gives perspective, it's, it's, it says nine month program on here. You actually get the subscriptions over a 12 month period when, when I talk about them on the, on the next slide. Um, you're publishing that uh, your application to Marketplace and you're engaging with the Microsoft team to provide feedback as you go through the program. So in terms of those, uh, in terms of those benefits split into two sections, so previously covered, uh, 5K of Azure, um, Dynamics, M365, GitHub, Visual Studio subscriptions in which your business can, can use. From an enablement and screening perspective, you do have access to Microsoft Learn and the training content that all sits within there, aligned to Microsoft certification. Um, but you get those app architecture design, those app architecture review sessions, those hour sessions, as well as marketplace consultancy, all as part of this program. And as I said, again, the qualification criteria 
Um, there's more countries listed on the screen, but typically uh, in this room, UK, Western Europe are, are listed there. Um, you are building or you've built an application on Azure that is B2B focused, and then you intend to deploy that app, sorry, deploy to list or create an offer on the Microsoft commercial marketplace for that, uh, that solution. And then lastly, if you're not already a member of the Microsoft Partner Network, or you're struggling to do so, um, uh, let us know, but we'll support you in terms of that process. Very low barrier of entry, no consumption requirements or no commitments uh, outside of you're building on Azure, it's B2B, and there's intent uh, to put it on the marketplace. So those of you that are ISVs, I just suggest going and signing up for this program to access all those benefits because there is no commitment or call, call, clawback from a Microsoft perspective. So the other side of it, when I think about Microsoft uh, as, as uh, Microsoft investment in ISVs, this uh, this FY more more particularly, as Steve was talking about, Microsoft Marketplace is a big part of that. To the point where, if you actually look at how the UK ISV team is this uh, this financial year, so from July, they've actually split out part of that team to focus on recruit of ISVs who are building on their marketplace. There is a team dedicated to that. So whereas they previously had just an ISV recruit team, just an ISV partner managed team, they've added the marketplace team to that. So it's evidence of their commitment to building out, um, oh, sorry, supporting ISVs to list their offers on, on Microsoft's marketplace. So uh, with that in mind, again, as, as, as Steve covered this morning, it's kind of a bit of a repeat of, of what he said, but the goal of the marketplace is that, yes, ISVs is a predominant focus, but uh, managed service providers, they're actually ability, there's, they're adding the ability for them to sell their managed services via via marketplace, um, some of, and their professional services via marketplace. IoT device partners as well, so any of you that are building out IoT solutions and selling that in conjunction with the IoT devices as well, there's going to be a provision provision for that, and in terms of offer types, they can be uh, it can be a SaaS based solution, it can be a uh, Azure managed solution in terms of you're deploying your application into a customer's Azure subscription and you're managing those resources for that customer versus just deploying a virtual machine into that customer's environment and they're managing it uh, themselves. Um, it can be Power BI apps, it can be Dynamics 365 apps, it can be M365 apps, all those things that will be transactable in, in that Microsoft marketplace. But there's also the ability to create the public offers in terms of what somebody will see in the, in the, in the marketplace itself versus creating private offers where you're creating specific offers based on a customer or the Microsoft partner that you're working on, so discounted rates uh, based on who they, who they are. And then in terms of any channel, it's kind of touched on Microsoft, obviously Azure Marketplace is for the Azure-based applications. If it's uh, end user-based applications, in terms of Azure, uh, a end user wants to go and self-serve, grab an application to increase their productivity, then there's the App Source Marketplace. There's in-product in terms of, so if you've not seen it, there's a Microsoft Teams store, for example, where people can get Teams add-ons within, within Teams. You can create listings in there, um, as well as engaging with Microsoft partners and uh, Microsoft sellers as, as you, uh, as you uh, kind of increase your revenues within, within Marketplace. And then lastly, as again, as Steve covered, is any purchase method. So it could be that that customer is, pay, is purchasing directly from Microsoft. They want to provision their applications via that, uh, sorry, your ISV solutions via that method. Um, it could be that they get invoiced each month. It could be that Mac uh, decrement, so customer commits to Azure consumption. They use your solution to uh, call off against that. And then there's the cloud solution provider model, which is uh, the, the partner uh, go-to-market model from a Microsoft uh, uh, subscription perspective. Um, it's just kind of, it just kind of evidences some of that, oh, sorry, it just, it's just a graphic of that um, in terms of it's Microsoft working with ISVs and customers um, at each stage. Um, so when we think about those 1 billion customers, uh, those 90K partners, those 15K sellers, uh, the opportunity to engage with, with each of those. But the one thing that I will call out from an ISV specific perspective is where we think about the ability to transact in those 17 countries, so sell in those 141 geographies. Um, it's that tax-managed piece 
in terms of if you as an ISV wanted to go and sell into a different country, the, the, the hoops that you may have to jump through to be able to transact and sell in that country might put you off. Actually having that listing on Microsoft Marketplace will enable you to easily do that so you're not having to make those investments in terms of offices, people in those, or, or even having to uh, register from a tax perspective in those respective countries. So it just makes it easier and, and gives you the opportunity to geo-scale your organization and not just think about selling, transacting in, in UK or even, even Europe, going further afield um, and selling, selling your solution. Um, and then in terms of marketplace, so I, I talked about the ISV success program. Additionally, in line, uh, there is um, a program called Marketplace Rewards. This is a bit of an eye chart, but as you can see, as you scale your revenues in uh, the Microsoft Marketplace, uh, the benefits in which Microsoft provides you will, will scale in, in line with that. Um, typically go to market uh, focus, so as I talked about uh, from a, uh, a solution partner designations perspective, um, in terms of go-to-market benefits that you get, um, you'll find a number of these actually align to that, but they are specific to ISV and specific to Marketplace. So when you look at things such as press release support, uh, blog post listings, um, success stories, um, I think there's, yeah, uh, blog posts as you, as you begin to scale and obviously things such as additional Azure internal use rights benefits. So you get these uh, benefits through uh, not just publishing your solution on the marketplace, but beginning to uh, transact via that, via that marketplace as, as well. And taking that one step further, what Microsoft have introduced this uh, financial year as well is the Microsoft tra uh, Marketplace Transact and Grow incentive where uh, ultimately um, Microsoft will pay you to create a transactable offer on their marketplace. Now that starts at uh, 10K dollars um, that you can receive from Microsoft just for creating that transactable offer. So um, the subsequent session to this one is uh, with Mike Ormeron, and he's gonna talk about more around the how. I know he's gonna touch on some of the, some of the why as well, but talk about the how in terms of um, how you create those SaaS-based offers, those Azure-managed offers, those VM offers, um, for Azure Marketplace so that you can take advantage of that incentive. Um, so yeah, 10K for building it. As you go through, you can actually um, accrue more. You can actually t accumulatively achieve 50K uh, incentive payment from, from Microsoft again. And that is, again, cash in the bank as opposed to Microsoft giving that to you as, as Azure, Azure credit. Um, so yeah something that I'd certainly, certainly think about uh, investigating, as I say, because Microsoft are using the marketplace and listing within marketplace as a measure for partnership or for ISVs. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, Mike's delivering his session after, after this one in this room, so please feel free to stay on. Um, all I'll say is in mindful of, of closing is, um, my team and myself are here to support from a Microsoft partnership perspective, so there's a number of bullets on the screen, but where we talk about that competency to solution partner designation transition, looking at Microsoft Partner Center <coughs> and helping you understand that, understanding rebates and co-ops and incentives from Microsoft, skills road mapping in line with solution partner designation, the advanced spec stuff, if interested in taking that one step further, and, and lastly, kind of the uh, Microsoft Marketplace offer creation element of that as well. So talking you through the requirements in line with, uh, with, with that. Um, the last piece that I'll close on is if you've not already spoken to Fastlane, who are one of the sponsors, um, especially when we look at uh, skilling from a solution partner's perspective, um, we've got some offers with them. So uh, Azure Administrator, so that AZ104, uh, 995 for a four-day course, which includes the exam vouchers, typically that RRP is at 222, and then <coughs> being mindful that a number of you are, are, are ISVs as well. Uh, we've got the uh, Azure DevOps um, course, certification course as well, so the AZ400, uh, again, same cost, 995, includes the exam voucher, uh, so heavily, heavily subsidized uh, courses. But that was, that was it from me. Um, yeah, as I say, any, any questions, I'm here to support, my team's here to support. Um, appreciate that, especially from a solution partner, there's a lot to take in, so happy to spend that time with you. 
uh, talking through your individual requirements. But thank you all for coming, and apologies again for the technical issues. <laughs>